We're gonna welcome to the stage Vincent Stulen, Stulen, I should say, from L'Oreal. Please welcome to the stage, Vincent. Hello, Josh. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Vincent. Thanks for being here. So, <clears throat> Vincent's the customer that likes to tell me how to do my job. What do you mean? Um, I give you ideas. You give me ideas. <laughs> and I challenge you. <laughs> this has been a great customer of ours for a long time. Uh, it's amazing the scale of things that you guys are doing. Uh, really appreciate it. You've been here several years. And uh, you definitely push us. Um, and those are my favorite customers. Because, like you said, they give us ideas. Uh, but challenges, we're, sometimes it's, it's always direct communication from Vincent, which we appreciate. But, you know, here's where you're lacking. Here's what we need to do to make the scale work. Uh, if you did it like this, you'd be able to sell a lot more product. Uh, so he aligns it with my interests as well. But give us, like, give us an idea of what's going on at, at L'Oreal and how you guys are using the product. And the scale is just your second, third largest advertiser in the world, right? Yes, exactly. So I think maybe I can tell a little bit about the journey because uh, we started uh, 2016 with a, a question of our CEO uh, who was asking about the ROI of digital investment because uh, since 2010, we've been embarking a, a pretty nice journey to uh, really transform the company. Uh, digital marketing, e-commerce, where we relate to consumers, the way we do social media, all that was pushing towards major investments. And uh, the CEO was asking, are you really sure now that we're not uh, you know, hitting the point of diminishing returns? So we started with this idea of having a 360-degree cockpit to measure everything, not only digital, but marketing, because very often we say it's not about digital anymore, it's really about uh, marketing in the digital age. So we had a project already ongoing and we got a bit stuck with a complex technology stack, you know, multiple layers, multiple data lakes, outsource, insource, multiple ETLs, and Yeah, I heard honestly, you tried pretty much everything, right? Too slow, too slow. So we didn't dump everything, even if we, if we had to do a little write-off. Uh, we've been studying what, what components we could keep and how we could leverage uh, a solution to do most of the job, which you were kind of highlighting in your introduction, yeah. you know, kind of mapping your technology stack with the power of Domo that we were seeing as a platform at that time. So I think we were a bit daring, you know, not looking at it only as a BI or a visualization tool, but really as a full data platform. Right. Uh, and I think this is where really we had the kind of a, a same vision and we were so excited about some of the feature you had already beginning of 2017 yeah. uh, and, 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 and where you're going today. So we started implementing this and uh, after pilot 2017, in 2018, we've been really at scale, pushing the product, which we call the cockpit, towards 5,000 people. And, uh, and we've been happy with the choice with Domo because honestly, we've been reaching speed and scale much faster than anything before. And today we see interesting transformation with the business. And what kind of scale is it? How many products, how many data sources? Who I think uh, my team could tell me better, but we have dozens of thousands of data sets. Dozens of thousands of yes, data sets. Yes, and it's gigabytes every night, every day, sometimes real-time data. And what is interesting is we're in a very decentralized company, uh, which is actually the power of L'Oréal uh, to really adapt to every market conditions very fast because our business is really forever changing. Uh, so we've got kind of a global supply of all those data sets, but we've got kind of a framework, governance framework, to allow every market to inject local stuff, or at zone level, or global brand level, and all this appears so in... So each product in each location is able to ingest yeah, exactly. their own data? Yeah, because we've got 30, uh, 36 brands, uh, we operate in 150 countries, so that's a matrix organization, if you make the, the math, that's thousands of business units, but yeah. so we pull all that data, with the right quality, the right governance, and in the end, it displays in one convenient application for the business. And then how do you take that and then leverage that up to other executives? How is it used in the organization besides the way that you use it? So we had the vision at that time when we launched uh, the product to um, make it uh, really like, uh, to, to democratize data access. So not only to make it an exec tool, but to go from an operational layer, strategic layer, down to the exec, uh, exec committee. 
so we've been really developing different parts of the apps, different apps, different dashboards, uh, uh, together with some extensive business training to make sure that we would embed this product into every business rituals. So now when we have uh, Jean-Paul Lagon, the name of our CEO, visit in the markets, it always starts with this 360 market overview. What is the share of voice? What is the share of bus? What is the share of views on YouTube? Uh, what is the market share? And now we have a very neat understanding of how the marketing pressure we put leads into sales. And this is uh, uh, raising very interesting discussion because even though we provide an executive summary, which is very easy to read. Uh, now, even the CEO has the power to drill down and, and get into challenging questions, which is... Uh, like what, uh, kind, what kind of questions would that lead to? Well, the question would be uh, about uh, ROI. Of course, that is a favorite question. Uh, but now we're really equipped to understand ROI, uh, you know, uh, between on and offline, because uh, you said we are second or third largest uh, advertiser. We've been shifting a lot uh, you know, our investment towards uh, digital, uh, be it social, different platforms. So now, uh, you know, after asking very broad questions like what's the ROI of digital overall, like uh, very often, you know, like uh, 2x TV, for example, yep. uh, we were drilling down into, but uh, okay, what's the ROI of social into the paid mix? What's the ROI of influencer marketing? What is the ROI of top tier influencers versus the money invest with them? So okay. this is the kind of question and granularity we can get into now. And then what's, what's the data told you? What, is, what are some case studies or use cases that have come out of the data that you've seen in this system? First of all, uh, we had, you know, some, um, of course, consumer uh, surveys about the habits of the way they search, engage with the products, purchase the products, recommend the products. And we know we are, are in a very balanced industry, you know, versus automotive or telco, where it's a lot about paid on earned, pretty balanced when you think about touch points. But we could now have an ROI between each of those. Okay. So this is uh, really well, understanding how all those pieces play together. Yes, uh, but with the ROI uh, comes uh, budget shifts, yeah. organizational changes, and for example, I can tell you. Uh, now we see a great uh, performance in precision media, programmatic. Uh, it forced us to be much more real-time, therefore internalizing many new resources we didn't have before. So, you know, from that understanding, it gets into deep organizational changes. So, we're, and you, I know you're going <coughs> to show us an app here a little bit later, yeah. uh, but I wanted to get you on stage too, so everyone just could see the scale of what's taking place here, because it really has been inspiring. And, Literally, we've all benefited in this room from Vincent using our product. Uh, so definitely a big thank you to you. And then I guess as a last question, um, you were there when we showed the flywheel for the very first time. Yeah. And your comment afterwards to Catherine Wong was, we need to move further out that flywheel and get to further stages of digital transformation. Yeah. And so I guess I would just be curious, you know, what, what does the future have in store for the way that we interact together and, and you know, what are the things that we can do for L'Oreal going forward to help you along that, that journey? Good question. Um, do you allow me to be demanding? Absolutely. Um, I would expect nothing less, Vincent. So, uh, no, first of all, we were really happy with the 360 marketing vision we have right now. And of course, having uh, all this data into one place, we started a few pilots to get from uh, descriptive into uh, predictive and prescriptive analytics, uh, and we're developing some apps right now to, to allow the marketeers within a market for a certain brand to do scenario planning and to understand how they can play with the mix and try to understand the way it will, uh, uh, you know, lead to uh, incremental sales. So this uh, uh, forecasting uh, element is really key. Another one is certainly uh, to use Domo as a data exchange platform. Um, I explained that we are transform the way we do media with precision media, but now with all the data we have in our hands real time, it's a great way to exchange with our media partners and to be much, much yeah. smarter with them. Planning, execution, reporting. So we expect this will be changing the way we relate to them. And the last one, and we discussed that in Portugal, uh, is really the way we uh, exchange data with retailers. 
uh, you know, we are, of course, invest a lot of money in uh, competitive intelligence to understand market share and stuff, but there's much more than that. Uh, we have uh, uh, partners with, with different software vendors uh, to understand our share of shelves, the quality of the content we put on online, uh, and now we think we, there's a lot to be done, the way we think about e-commerce, but applied back into commerce, normal commerce, physical commerce. And we see great potential to start a few pilots uh, maybe in the US and France with you very soon. And because of those uh, ambitions and because of the maturity of both the platform and us as understanding how to leverage it, I think we can get into a stage where we get into you know, long-term joint business planning where we have a common stakes to continue transformation. Awesome. Well, definitely appreciate you being here. I look forward to hearing you later on today. Let's give it up for Vincent Stewart, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.